Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and Offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel and are operating remotely until further notice in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair, in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent, may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCP website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. We will conduct this meeting. All voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Causey. Ms. Hen. Yes. Ms. Mack. Yes. Mr. McMillian. Yes. Mr. Mahumza. Yes. Ms. Rowe. Yes. And Mr. Brusades. I am here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, would you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mary Boswell McComas. Present. William Burke. Present. Christina Byers. Present. Michael Dickerson. Present. Raquel Jones. Raquel Jones. Present. Maria Lowry. Present. George Roberts. George Roberts. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Dara Williams. Michael Zarchin. James Corns. Present. Pete, Pete Dixit. Present. Margaret Ann Howie. Merrill Plate. Here. George Saris. Present. Brian Scriven. Present. Barbara Burnoff. Present. Bernard Adams. Present. Megan Shea. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit, or I believe Mr. Saris, um, to come forward to present contracts one through 14. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good Thank Mr. you. Dixit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. And our first item is MWE 856-14. Curriculum, eighth grade language arts anthologies, and eighth and ninth grade novels. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for the continued purchase of language arts anthologies and novels for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $600,000 
bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1.2 million with five awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2014. Okay, board members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please. The uh, next item is uh, MWA 812-20 Athletic Officiating Services. Uh, this is a new competitively bid contract for athletic officiating and scheduling services for the Office of Athletics. Approval was requested for a five-year contract <coughs> with eight recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $3.7 million. Thank you. Board members, questions? Okay. I have one. Um, I understand these are the vendors, um, at least most of them, that we are currently using. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. And it's my understanding that the processes by which we use these services are largely paper-based. And one of the questions I received from one of our athletic directors had to do with improvements to that process and if there was any opportunity with this contract to um, use any type of electronic payment system with these vendors, if that's something that we explored or was included in um, our requirements. Had any of these vendors expressed I moving that direction is that something we've pursued that is something that we did not include as a requirement i think uh, most of these uh, are associations with relatively finite resources and modest budgets and i think if this were uh, obviously we've made one change in the last few years um, whereby we we transfer the, the funds into a clearing account from which they're paid. But I think that the bulk of any automation would be on our side of the ledger. And certainly it's, um, it's a great goal. And we'll add it to our list of, uh, <laughs> of great technology improvements that we're currently working on. But that's a great suggestion. Thank you. So that could be added to the list. Thank you. Yes. That's what I had. Any other questions, board members? Okay. Hearing none. Thank you. Next item, please. Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, CWA 120-19, Printing, Copying, and Reproduction Services. This contract modification will provide for the continued printing, copying, and reproduction services for the Office of uh, Copy and Print Services for, and for schools and for offices. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $485,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $785,000 with seven awarded vendors approved by the board in August 2019. And I'll just point out that as, as we say here, almost all of the spending to date is associated with um, the, uh, the effort to, to produce and distribute school supplies uh, for uh, remote instruction. Um, and it, most of that will be reimbursed um, under the, uh, the CARES grant. Um, and that's why we're bringing this back much sooner than expected. Thank you. That's helpful information to have. Board members, any questions? I have a question, Ms. Henn. This is Lisa Mack. Yes, Ms. Mack. Mr. Saris, would this also include printing of things like the operating budget books, the capital budget books? Is that done in-house? 
we we've have still done that in house, and we've largely been able to retain that because of the expanded use of posting these documents on the web. We've uh, a lot of our uh, publishing software has made it much easier to uh, print fewer documents and and make them much more widely acceptable uh, through the internet. But when board members get a copy of the actual um, operating budget or capital budget, that printing would be included in this amount or is that a different no. type of printing? That's that's in the office, that's in the uh, in the office budget for for my department and for copy and print services. So it's entirely internal and okay, not related you. to this contract. Thank you very much for the clarification. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please. Thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, MWE. 802-21 Office Supply Catalog Solutions. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract for Chromebooks for the Office of Technology Support Services. Approval is requested for a three-year and seven-month contract with the option for a one-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $670,000. Uh, this is a contract that we uh, put, wanted to put in place in the event, uh, in this case, Staples, which uh, was able to quote us the price closest to our, our major uh, acquisition contract for Chromebooks, is able to actually have inventory um, at the time that we put this together. Uh, they were hoping to have inventory. That is currently not the case, but it, uh, if and when they should have inventory, we may be able to take advantage of this contract um, until our, our bulk lease purchase is delivered. So it's simply an option if, if we do exercise it will be using uh, the CRF technology grant funds for this purpose um, and it gives and it just puts us in a position if we can identify inventory with this supplier. So Mr. Saris is the issue that we can't use the grant funds toward our existing lease but we can use it toward the purchase of the Chromebooks using this contract? Well, no. So we have um, put in a, a regular order uh, for the lease purchase, um, but we also have the ability to purchase additional devices through the grant funds. Uh, and we've planned to uh, acquire up to 38,000 devices or purchase using the technology grant, uh, but the inventory is just uh, under so much pressure that um, uh, it's a question of supply rather than pricing and contract uh, availability. Okay, so that, that answer is my question. It's really an issue of supply rather than... Um, ability to use one right. procurement method over the other. Right. In this case, we have great pricing, great contracts, and there's just a, a, a shortage of, of units because everybody's in the same situation. Hearing that a lot these days. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Any, any other questions? Okay. Hearing none, okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is, uh, Pete, do you want 
to do this or you want me to keep going? Let me try. If I need help, then I'll transfer it to you. <laughs> okay, that's never happened, but I'm <laughs> standing by. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, next contract is CWA-105-20, and this is maintenance and repair of warehouse equipment. And this really is just for the uh, maintenance and repair of warehouse equipment. And this purpose of this request is assignment of the contract from McCall Handling Company to Eastern Lift Truck Company Incorporated. So I believe it's name change of the company. Can we confirm, is that a, a name change? The, the notes we received said that it was due to an acquisition of assets. Yeah, it, it is both a name change and an acquisition. So um, McCall uh, uh, was was purchased um, by Eastern Lift and uh, is, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's just a, it's just an acquisition. They be, they purchased all of the assets and became the regional uh, representative for Heister, which is a major manufacturer of of these forklift equipment. Okay, thank you. Board members, questions? Hearing none. Thank you. Next the next contract is JLE 616-20. This is for revenue maintenance, repair, and installation of washing machines and dryers. Uh, it is a five-year contract, and it the contract includes maintenance and repairs and any installation that is needed. Any questions? Uh, this is Lisa Mack. Yes, Ms. Mack. Where are these washer and dryers located? There are about 17 schools that use washers and dryers, primarily for uniform. In some cases, students that do not have that facility at home, homeless students. Okay. and. Uh, and I'm very happy to hear that. So thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, we're not adding to that. Are we adding to the list of schools or we're just ensuring that we have the money to install and repair, install new to replace and repair existing? Most of the money will be used for repairing and maintaining it. But there are cases when the old one breaks down and we have to replace it and we can use this contract to replace that. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Hen, I have a question on that. Yes, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Pete, wouldn't all 24 high schools have washers and dryers? I don't have names of all the schools here, but I would guess that all the high schools have it. Yeah, and I've seen where the elementaries in different schools would send their supplies or send the things like mop heads or whatever to high schools to be washed. But in yeah. addition to, you know, the uniforms and back in the old days, the towels, but no longer very many towels, but uniforms would be a critical piece to be washed. That's right. So there are 75 schools and there's only 27 high schools. So obviously it's more than just high school. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item. Next item is JME 505-21. It's for emergency cleaning, remediation, and restoration service. Uh, this is the first time we are having this contract. This is just in case we need help because of the current conditions. So there's contractual service available. And this is uh, a, a Montgomery County contract, which is what we are piggybacking on. Any 
board members' questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please. The next item is GDA 309-20 is for gym floor game line uh, application. Most of these schools are elementary schools and it'll provide, it will give us the ability to put lines on the gym floor for games. Board members, questions? I have a quick question. Mr. Dixit, um, my kids played in a lot of gyms, um, like in the evening after school hours for various um, basketball leagues that they um, participated in. Do we get reimbursed at all by the county when our gyms are used um, in this manner? Uh, it depends on the condition. If the use is for our students or for Rec and Park, the answer is no. If it is used by community groups, then there is a nominal charge. Okay, thank you very much. Other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item. The next item is GDA 301-21, and this is for propane supply. Uh, there are eight facilities that utilize propane. Uh, it is grounds maintenance shop, science labs in high school, and some bus lots. So this $100,000 contract would be used for propane. Thank you. Board members, questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item. The next item is CWA 135-20. And this is for the maintenance and installation of the theatrical lighting. A lot of these lightings are in high schools. So this contract will give us the ability to repair them and install them if there is any inst installation needed. Board members, questions? Okay, hearing none, thank you. Next item. The next item, ARA-201-20, I'll provide a little bit of background for that. This is for transfer of a piece of property at Aitonsville Elementary School, and the property will be transferred to Baltimore County, who will allow the use for the Rails to Trails program. And for those of you who may not know what is Rails to Trails, Catonsville Rails to Trails is a nonprofit organization that was established in 1999 to create hiking, biking trails in Catonsville and to advocate for biking infrastructure. Approximately two miles of trails have already been developed using county and state grants and private donations. So they had requested us and county to let them use this trail this piece of property. This is about 0.7 acre out of the 11.8 acres that we have. It is in the interest of board to transfer the property to the Baltimore County, and then they can allow rails and trails to use that property. So this request is to transfer the property to Baltimore County. I'd like to make a comment. Um, I use the rails to trails every day, um, and I know exactly where this property is, um, and there's a lot of volunteer work that has been done to get to this point where they will now utilize this piece of property to take the trail even further. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Can, can you speak to the location of the property and 
space in relation to the current fields? I know we have an exhibit. It looks like it's, it's hard to envision. Could you describe? Yeah. I, 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 oh, I can, I can describe I, it if you can't, Mr. Dixit. I'll, I'll start and maybe you can help. Uh, okay. Thanks for your support. It is located on the west side of Bloomsbury Avenue and south of Bloomingdale Avenue. So if you look at the picture and you go to the west side of Bloomsbury and the south of Bloomingdale, that's where you see that. Um, all that I remember is on the back of the school and doesn't have any impact on our facility. On no, our on uh, yeah. athletic fields or... Yeah. If you were standing with your back up against the back of the school, there is a retaining wall um, that they have paved and then to the right of that retaining wall is where they're going to begin like a boardwalk structure that would go all the way up to Frederick Road. Thank you. Any other questions board members? Hearing none, thank you Mr. Dixit. The next contract is ASI-801-20 for, for Overly High School Partial Roof Replacements. This is the part of roof that is in poor condition. So this request is to award the contract to the lowest bidder, SGK Contracting. The funds are included in the capital improvement program that board has already approved. And we had a good response, um, about eight bidders, and the price is within the budget. Thank you. Questions? We're quiet today. Thank you. <laughs> Next item, please. Next item is either Jim or George. You want to handle that, George? Just yeah, I'll pick up here. Uh, PCR 246-12 web hosting and mass notification system. Uh, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from West Interactive Corporation to Entrado Interactive Services Corporation. Uh, there is one award bidder on the original contract approved by the board in August 2012. And this is the name change uh, case only. So. Um, and we use this uh, contract to provide for the uh, mass communication system that we have for uh, notifying staff, parents about closures and, um, and other uh, major events, um, as well as it gives schools a platform to develop their own websites. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Hearing none, thank you. The next item is MBU 500-20 for elevator and chair lift inspections. Uh, there are 85 chair lifts and 75 elevators throughout the system. This contract will provide uh, coordinate, coordination and inspections by the vendor providing maintenance and repair services. Okay. So this is just for, okay. This is, this is an extension this, for one year. Extension for one year. Yeah. With no modification of the spending authority. Mm -hmm. There is no modification of the dollars. It's the same amount. Okay. Yeah, the reason this is an extension is because Baltimore County typically extends one year at a time. And in this case, we're riding their contract. So we're going to parallel their extension every time they, they exercise it. Uh -huh elevators and lifts inspected. Can you speak to that, Mr. Dixit? I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat what that? Is the, you were... What is the frequency of these inspections? Yearly. Once Yearly. a year? Once a year. Yeah. yeah. 
And do you know how many we, we have system-wide? We have 75 elevators and 85 chairlifts. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Okay, hearing none, thank you. Next item. I think that marks That's the conclusion of all the contracts. Okay, thank you. Board members, do I have a motion to recommend items 1 through 14 to the full board for approval? Thank you. May I have a second? May I have a second? I'll second, Julie. Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Slade, may I have a roll, roll, roll call vote, please? Yes, may I ask for clarification who made the motion? Ms. Rowe made the motion and Mr. McMillian was the second. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. The motion carries unanimously. Is there any further business? Ms. Han, yes, this is Ms. Slate. I would like to make note for other staff members that were not mentioned in roll call that are participating to be acknowledged at this time. Go ahead, Ms. Slate. I, I believe there are several that were not announced that are on the call that I'd like to give them the opportunity to announce their names now. Lisa. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any further business? No, we have none. Thank you. Since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.